Hello everyone, Ken and Lloyd here, back with more Sword Online Fatal Bullet, and I'm probably going to upload this probably uh, <laughs> after I finish uh, Resident Evil 1 Remake, so this might be like mid-March mid or something, but uh, I couldn't hold back any, any longer that uh, they came out with the winter update. Finally, so it added quite a few things. So we're going to take a look at the various things that they've added. Um, I do believe that it might be in here. Combat system menus. Down. Wouldn't it be under this? <laughs> Um, I do believe that the, this is it. So this update comes with an additional story mode that is called Mask of the Abyss. And it contains an entirely new story. It's probably not going to be as long as... It might be as long as, like, one of the smaller DLCs, roughly. Uh, they added an Abyssal Dungeon, which is probably where the in the entirety of the story takes place, for the most part. Four new weapons, which is interesting. I really hope that they're more unique, like the uh, Dissonance of the Nexus ones. Um, I do know that they have two swords, and they are from the Alicization animes arc. And then they have six new outfits. All of them are purchasable from the Metal Trader and three new accessories, again from the Metal Trader. Uh, yeah, Metal Trader. And then two new faces and hairstyles for avatar customization. So that is very interesting. And then you access the story by going to the main menu. So we're going to go to the Metal Trader now to look at all of them unmodified. I am actually wearing one of the new ones right now and I really like the look of them. So I am recording this uh, February... February 3rd. So they added the option of buying 10 unlocking ships times 10, 100 tra uh, transformation chips if you don't want to use credits for them but to be completely honest if I remember right they're so cheap that you might as well just buy them for credits instead so they have the chief elder hat abyssal mask eye patch of fortitude for the accessories and then they have swordswoman's uh, uniform and that is the uniform of, like, the trainees in, uh, Alicization. The Chief Elder Outfit, which is just a Jester Outfit for... for female characters. I'm not exactly sure why they decided to do that. It just seems, out of all the outfits they could have made, that one seems a bit bizarre. And you can use... you can get uh, UGO's knight outfit, which is very nice, and also Alice's uh, knight outfit, very nice. And then they have abyssal garment, which is completely new, and I'm guessing that it's like in the style of uh, the new abyssal dungeon, ju just judging by the name, or like the new character wears this or something. And then they have Intelligence Operative, which is what I'm currently wearing. And that is, I'm pretty sure, the outfit that Itsuki wears at the end of Dissonance of the Nexus, the epilogue. So, I do like uh, all of the ones that they added, except for the Jester outfit. That just seems way too out there. <laughs> And another thing that did kind of irritate me, too, is that they did not make a female version of the Abyssal Garment. Uh, they did a really good job on making this look super awesome. Uh, just like the Death Gun outfit, 
there's only a male version, so that, I don't know, that just feels really disappointing to me. And also, the the amount of medals you need to get for some of these are quite a lot, so unless you have a bunch of them stockpiled, uh, you're probably going to have to grind for a little bit in order to get them. But at the same time, if you do the party hero quest, getting medals is actually not super difficult, uh, since you get, I think it was 150 or 300 of each per time. So there's that. And I just think that the recolored operative, I really like uh, the trench coat-like look of this, and I think it works well with uh, my current setup. And then I did buy an Abyssal Garmament. So I think the Abyssal Garmament is honestly kind of an upgraded version of Braveheart, uh, now that I think of it. But, uh, but I'm gonna keep with that. So I haven't really been play playing a bunch of uh, Fatal Bullet since last time. I'm not sure if I uh, recorded this or not, but this is my setup that I'm using. Uh, 194 Strength, 140 Vitality, 103 Intelligence, 255 for Agility, Dexterity, and Luck. And then I have uh, the 194 Strength allows me to dual wield the AR Blues, AR Blue Rose Mark III Pluses, and then go for a full-on speed build, well aside from maxing out Agility. And then Speed Form, Bullet Eraser, Shield Matrix, and then Trigger Happy with the with that. And then I have 103 Intelligence for Conceal Level 3 as soon as I get it unlocked. So uh, that's kind of what I'm going with. And then my Arphasis is uh, full-on buffing and tankiness. So like Human Fortress, uh, Shield Matrix, Crit Form, Nanotech Shot healing and whatnot. So with that, let's uh, let's get started with the story mode because I am very curious to see... Oh, I forget that it does that. I thought if you did that in-game, like, it didn't go to the desktop? That's kind of... I don't know why it does that. I think I did mention, uh, like in the August update, for some reason that happens, and I don't know why that is. Okay, so going to this, it's just in the list of... at the bottom. So this is a completely free update, so I'm pretty sure that you can probably play this without any of the DLCs. If you do, you probably just need Destinance of the Nexus purely because of the White Frontier area. And that's it. So let's get started. As soon as it loads. There it goes. Ooh, now that is very cool looking. Okay. With everything settled in the White Frontier, you have you had gone back to enjoying your time in GGO with your friends until one day, your Arphasis tries to speak, but can't. Suddenly, a message com comes from Kirito, telling you he wants to talk and asking you, uh, asking that you hurry over. Concerned, you make your way to Kirito's room. And and this does happen after the true ending, so. It's probably the best that you do get the true ending uh, before doing this. I think Distance of the Nexus is technically after the true ending as well. Um, but I did do the true ending before this, so very good. Um, so does it, <laughs> it doesn't classify as a quest, I guess. But to Kirito's room!
いやクレハも急に呼び出してごめん People sitting down on furniture in a cutscene? What is this? <laughs> What's the calamity this time? Sounds about right. So, my Arphasis not being able to speak is not a big deal, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure how you would figure that's a new quest, but okay. Uh, don't worry about it. How do you know that? Oh, okay, I... I see what, what they're doing here. I, I thought they, like, put that text there, like, as if the characters, like, already knew that. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're, we're on track here now. She's turned into a mime. Are you leveling up your mining, uh, miming skill or something? Yeah, that's exactly. えっと、ジェスチャーゲームとかじゃないよね。様子がおかしいわ。レイちゃん、もしかして何か困ってるの? <laughs> Let me guess, you can't talk. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. アファシスはプレイヤーじゃないから病気や通信障害の類いじゃないと思うけど。そうね。ということは新しい仕様。でも。Because it just spices up that gameplay. Oh,ゼリスカさん、今大変なんです。実はレイちゃんの声が出なくなっちゃった。ん、どうして？Uh, did you forget that she has an emphasis too? うちのデイジーちゃんも。会話ができなくなっちゃったの。サポート系とバトル系のお話はできるみたいだけど。話せる内容が限られてしまったってことか。プレイヤーへのサポート機能が制限されていないところを見ると、タイミング的におそらく今回のクエスト絡みかしらね
そっかお母さんとつながってるからレイちゃんたちもマザーコンピューターの不調はアファシスに影響しているということになるかしらアファシスとのコミュニケーションが取りにくくなりプレイヤー自身の力量が試されるいやテストトゥルースキルズジョージデバフ付きの高難度クエストってところか今はまだデイジーちゃんのサポート機能は生きてるけどハッキングが続いたら症状が悪化しちゃうかも I want to hear her voice again. そうね私レイちゃんの声もレイジーちゃんの声も好きだものお話ができないのは寂しいわ Really something for the people who don't like the Urphasis for any reason <laughs> to be like, nah, we, we don't need to do anything. <laughs> 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 uh, sure. <laughs> Since I haven't played in a while, I might get wrecked, but. Hmm, we'll see. I, have, I still haven't tried the、uh, special invitation super quests or anything, so. Kind of curious to see if this is better or worse than that. Oh, no? You're not going to be able to do it. Hmm. Vera, you okay? Creable. Can you h a n d l e it? Well, type Z's are supposedly a lot better, so who knows? Huh? 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 なるほどわかりました確かに通信に負荷がかかっている気配はありましたやっぱりクエスト絡みおそらくこのままでは言語機能の回復は期待薄でしょうそれどころか他のタイプのアファシスたちにも被害が拡大して早めにクリアしないとどんどん難易度の上がるクエストというわけですなんてことまあ、私はそこのアホシスさんとは違って高性能ですからこの通りスラスラ話せますけどはあうるさいそんなにジタバタしても皆さんには伝わってませんよ横着してないで言いたいことがあるならメッセージでどうぞん何ですかその顔。お皆さんまでそんな驚いた顔であまさかうんいや俺たちもすっかりキュートユースクラブ忘れていたわね<笑>レイちゃんからメッセージをもらって知ったんじゃないの普通の会話ができなくなったことあ、はいナイス I didn't even think All right, we can send messages <sighs> 皆さんまでこんなのでクエスト攻略なんてできるんですか Clearly not 私も少し心配になってきたわもう、フィフィンウィッもう、仕方ないですね。少しの間だけなら、ついていってあげますよ。暇ですし
even though that she does have the legitimate reason to do, to do so, because if it gets worse, even though that she's better, that <laughs> it would become a problem eventually. そこのアホシスさんとは格が違うというところを見せてあげます。パーフェクト。今後私の方にも影響が出ないとも限らないですから。Exactly. <笑> So I'm guessing we can use everybody, it sure seems that way. So pick out my typical team here. I'm still disappointed that, um... That 7 only gets level 3 of healing field shot and HP recovery shot. She could have been the the ultimate healer if she had level four. But that's where my Ephesus comes in, I guess. Alright, so where do we need to go now? Way over there, okay. Interesting. So far, this hasn't been too bad. I'm still really curious to see who the uh, the new character is, though. That's honestly what has gotten me into uh, into this so far. Hmm. So they're actually going to use this gate for something. <laughs> Okay, it says, The Abyssal Dungeon is a special type of dun dungeon. Upon entry, you will be reset to near default status and will proceed deeper and deeper through a randomly chosen dungeon. All weapons and accessories inside the dungeon will be provided from chests and enemy drops. The following conditions apply to the Abyssal Dungeon. Players' level, stats, and, uh, stats equipment, and items will be reset to the default. Accessories will be removed. Credits will be set to 10,000. Credits will be added to your cre um, credits earned will be a, a, added to your credits and count towards the total bounty. But special bounty rewards cannot be claimed within the dungeon. All skills and gadgets will be unlocked. Gun and sword mode and dual wielding mode will also uh, be unlocked. Dual wielding for guns. They don't have dual swords, as far as I know. The following conditions apply as well. All weapon arts will be unlocked. Only currently worn outfits will be carried over. Also, outfits cannot be changed or removed within the dungeon, even though the outfits don't add to your stats, so that's interesting. Metal and weapon proficiencies will be carried over. Affinity levels will be carried over, but won't change in the dungeon. So basically, you can't do the Abyssal Dungeon to gain affinity levels, but to be completely honest, um, like, <laughs> at this point I kind of feel like anyone who would enter the Abyssal Dungeon probably already has max affinity with everybody, or at least the players that they typically go with. Um, everyone else will only be valid inside the Abyssal Dungeon and will have no effect on the data outside of it. Huh? Okay, so it's a uh, randomly chosen dungeon, and will everything will be reset to default. So I'm guessing we're going back to like level one. And maybe at certain points you can buy weapons for within the dungeon. That is very interesting. When when, when I heard of this, I was like, Oh, well, it's just going to be, like, another dungeon, just like 
the distance of the Nexus, uh, the Ruins Institute, for an example, just being another dungeon like that. But they're, they've made it quite interesting. So, of course, my accessories have been removed. So, let's see. Yep, we're level 1. With, uh... Absolutely nothing. Except for some reason we have optical <laughs> attack, uh... Mech damage, and whatnot. So, let's see if we have anything else. Nothing too special. And we did get a little bit of ammo and, and stuff. That is... hmm. Okay, so we have access to everything, but at the same time, you have to gain levels like within the dungeon in order to unlock everything. That's interesting. Honestly, this is kind of a cool way of doing a, like, a new game plus sort of thing. But... Um... Dash attack. And being on extreme mode is probably not the best idea for this either. I'll put that on... Um... It only seems like I have five skills I can use anyway. So many skills. I mean, I could use skill free shot. I don't think that's really necessary. I might put that on my Arphasis though. Uh, dash attack. And four I can put on. Concentration. Yeah, this is. When you have all the skills, it's just. Quite a lot. And then... Hyper Awareness, maybe? Skills... I'm probably gonna put Pot on her, too. And then... Skill free shot. Hyper awareness. Oh, and your proficiencies are also 0%, so maybe you need to level up each of the skills again? Oh, healing bullet. <laughs> Might be a good idea. Um. <laughs> Does she seriously not get another one? Okay. Okay. And we still do get gadgets. And then these characters, they go to their default levels that they start out with. So I guess 7 starts out being level 17. And she can't... she doesn't even have a full set of skills. Very interesting. And then Sachi starts out at 16, with not a full set of skills either. And then, yeah, um, 
But like going through this, like setting up all of my skills again. <laughs> it's quite a lot. Okay, let's see what we got. Use. It says... Okay, reset player and Arphasis stats. CP can be redistributed. Skills will return to default. Equip weapons, accessories, set gadgets... Set skills, gadgets, and favorite will be all reset. Level and proficiency will be retained. So that's just a way of resetting your skills. I mean, resetting your attribute points for free. Um, that's quite nice. Buy. We can buy ammo. And weapons. What? Five million? So we have some level 9 weapons in here, and then we have level 11 weapons. 30 million, okay. Alrighty then. So you can buy the base weapons, uh, I'm guessing you can't. You can buy diamonds, okay. Um, you can buy weapons as soon as you get, um... As soon as you get more credits and whatnot. Yeah, Egil, do you have... Oh. Okay, so all we have going for us is appraisal, shops, and reset. Okay, the Abyssal Dungeon item box. The Abyssal Dungeon lobby item box shares its contents with your home item, item box. So you can transfer your items you found in the dungeon. However, items put inside the box cannot be taken outside of the dungeon. So think carefully before storing them. You know, that that is a good point. Um, it's good that they made that clear. <laughs> so let's see here. Okay, you can pr proceed from any floor in the Abyssal Dungeon using the teleporter in the uh, in the dungeon lobby. Each floor has teleporters at the entrance and exit, and each exit teleporter will move you to the next floor. Fast travel is unavailable in the dungeon, and you can only return to the um, you can only return to the lobby from a floor's entrance or exit. Your floor progress will not be saved until you reach certain floors. Uh, first floor, fourth floor, seventh floor, eleventh floor, etc. Uh, so it, I'm sure it increases per floor. Once you reach one of these checkpoint floors, you will be able to teleport uh, to it directly from the lobby teleporter. Uh, note that if all of your party members fall during battle, you will have to restart from the most recent checkpoint floor. Okay. Interesting. So unfortunately, with uh, with me showcasing uh, everything um, and getting everything set up here, uh, I think it's about time. So I'm not going to directly go into the dungeon in this part, but in the next one we get to see what that is. And considering, uh, well, let's look at the main quest here. It says a <laughs> recommended level, level 1, and then you just get credits. Um... But just to th throw out a few thoughts out there, I think that they did a very interesting thing with this dungeon. It does sound like it's an infinite dungeon, though, um, or uh, should be, anyway, an infinite dungeon. The only problem that I have with it is that there's really nothing that you can use your other equipment on except for, I mean, outside of this, except for, like, the special invitation dungeons, which, I mean, I guess that, I don't know, I guess that's kind of a good thing, but I was kind of figuring that if they did an infinite dungeon, that they would, um, that 
that they would allow you to use your old stuff just to make, you know, your super cool weapons. You can use it, uh, use those for extra challenge and everything. But at the same time, I am optimistic that looking at this anywhere, um, that I think what they did makes it very interesting going into this and that it's kind of a, a challenge thing going back to level one and everything. Um, so I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, and then maybe I'm really curious to see how they progress the story. Like, does it progress like every time you go to a checkpoint floor or, or what type of thing? Abyssal Dungeon Lobby? So, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's interesting, but at the same time, uh, it's kind of disappointing that you you may have spent so much time getting the perfect weapons, and then as soon as they put this dungeon in here that sounds like it could be an infinite dungeon, um, you can't even use that. You have to get your own stuff from within the dungeon. It's uh, quite interesting. But uh but yeah with that thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day